Hello darlings, welcome to my home. Uh, 2020, tis the year of the working from home Zoom meeting. So I thought I would show you a very typical makeup look of mine that I, that I do when I am just working from home, doing my thing, having my Zoom meetings. And the essence of this entire look is minimum effort, maximum chic. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I have been a member of Skillshare, a paying member for three or four years. I love the service. I have a ton of epic class recommendations and we will chat about that in a bit. The very first thing I did was I put my hair in a low, sleek bun. Look, look. I would love to be that person who has big, bouncy, voluminous curls on a Tuesday. Are you that person? How do you do it? I don't understand. I think for me, I would just, I think I'd just rather sleep, you guys. This style is what I tend to gravitate towards. It's also great for concealing three day old greasy hair, in case you were asking. And then I also popped on some sunscreen um, because at some stage, I would like to preempt that at some stage I might actually leave the house. <laughs> um, one, one can aspire, if, if only for a walk around the block. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost SPF 50. I asked you guys on Instagram what you thought about this and so many of you said it was like a holy grail, holy grail sunscreen for you. And many of you said that you loved the formula but it made your eyes water. I'm so glad that you mentioned it, you guys mentioned that to me because I might not have made the connection otherwise. Once every fortnight, my eyes will become uncontrollably watery um, and it, it, must be, it must be the SPF. But I keep using it because it performs really beautifully under makeup, so lightweight. I've shuffled you a little bit closer. Let us get on to the makeup, the fun bit. So I'm gonna start with a cushion foundation. Seriously lazy, seriously lazy. I find these to be the quickest way to get some coverage on the face. Now, whenever it comes to like really quick makeup, I always say, pick your priority. So for example, some people like to focus on their complexion. That gives them the most confidence. Uh, some people don't feel like themselves without a brow. Uh, others feel as though their, you know, their wing liner is almost their uniform, very much a part of their identity. So whatever it is that speaks to you and that what, whatever makes you feel best, that, that's what you should focus on. Right now I'm having um, quite a bit of hormonal breakout, so I'm gonna be focusing mainly on skin. I'm doing a little bit of a, bit of a lip, bit of an eye, you know, just cause I love makeup. I like to pop a little bit of that cushion foundation just directly under the brow, really haphazard. It just uh, takes away some of that redness that I can get around my eyes that can make me look a little bit tired. Okie dokie, what next? I am going to conceal some of these blemishes. I wouldn't get too caught up on this if we're talking about Zoom because you're so grainy. <laughs> Especially if you have Australian internet, trust me, they can't see anything. Um, it's, it's nice if you have like a, like a boulder like this one that I've got here. A little bit of concealer won't hurt, but I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't get too, too caught up in it. I'm loving this Pat McGrath concealer for blemishes, especially. I'm not as, as much of a fan of it under the eyes, but for blemishes, it really has this sort of tacky quality that means that it doesn't just shift immediately as you're blending it. It really sticks to the spot. Also a little bit of under eye concealer. This is the Revlon Youth Fix. I do find that Zoom does something funny to like my under eye circles. There's something about Zoom that makes me look very tired and gray. So adding a generous amount of under eye concealer. This kind of reminds me, this product reminds me a little bit of the Maybelline Age Rewind in that it's really smoothing and brightening, but it's got that lightweight silicon slip. Really getting around that tear duct here. I find that's where a lot of us kind of get quite dark and shadowy. Ooh, you know what I'm really loving? Glossy blush. I want to do a video actually all about different kinds of glossy blushes. These are the ones by M Cosmetics. Um, the serum blushes, they are so lovely. Every day I wake up and I'm so excited to just put a little bit of glossy blush on my cheeks. It's really like a pleasure in my mornings. So I'm thinking, shall we go for a peachy color or a pinky color? Peach, pink, peach, pink. It's a tough one, but I think I'll go for a peach. I always like a peach. So it's kind of like a liquid blush formula. And I find also that uh, teleconference and, and Zoom applications tend to make the entire frame look quite gray. Um, so I think a little bit of extra blush translates really nicely. Oh, oh. <laughs> who am I? 
Who is this blush loving person? For years, I didn't even wear it. I also find that I don't even really need to add highlight after this because it gives me such a, such an epic shiny bounce on the apples of my cheeks. So double whammy. And I'm using quite a big blush application here, really over the larger area. You can even add a little bit on your nose. I think that that's a really youthful placement. Just gives the, the entire face this sort of all over saturated color. Ooh, she's so dewy. I am going to add a little bit of powder, mainly for longevity. Um, just pat out any areas where it looks like your concealer is creasing a little bit. This is the Pat McGrath Under Eye Blurring Powder, another great example of a hyper lightweight silica based powder. Um, just adding a little touch across the forehead, mainly down the center of the face. This stuff is impossible to overdo, even if I'm in like a massive rush. I haven't had any powder disasters. <laughs> for eyes, I want some definition that's really quick and simple. So some days I find that I'll just add a little bit of bronzer through the socket if I'm feeling a bit puffy. That placement is really great for, for hooded or for puffy eyes because it helps to give the eyes more contour. Other days I'm just feeling like my eyes look really tired and I'll add a little bit of highlight down the center of the, uh, of the ball of the eye. And that's really great for deep set eyes. It kind of brightens the entire eye area. I also love a one and done eyeshadow. I just uploaded a video all about my favorite one and done eyeshadows. I shall link that somewhere on the screen, but I have a new discovery, you guys. This is the Cossus 10 second eyeshadow in the shade Globe. And I've been playing with this for the past few days. This formula is unlike anything I have ever tried. So it's kind of like a liquid. And I just swipe it all over the lid. It's not a product that sets straight away, so you can you know, afford to, to be a little bit lax with it. Then I'm gonna take a, a bit of a fluffy crease brush and just buff out the edges. As the name would suggest, this really is like a 10 second eyeshadow, foolproof. And the color is so pretty. It's this kind of like bronzy, mauvey moment. Yeah, wow. I do find that at the end of the day, it can get a little bit creasy uh, where my skin folds on my eyelid, but no worries. I just pat it out, it's not a big deal. Ooh, love it, love it. I might add a little bit of that to my lower lash line too. I will be doing a um, Cosis brand review on my channel very soon. Keep, keep your eyes peeled for that one, very excited. I've been pretty candid that 2020 was <laughs> challenging for me. 2020 was such a roller coaster, and I'm sure many of you guys can relate. It was one for the books. Um, but one of the things that I'm so pleased that I did this year, it was really beneficial for me and my own mental health, was I actively sought out new passions, new passion projects, and really sought to like hone in on my creative skills. And a great place to do that is Skillshare. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thou thousands, guys, thousands of classes from cool creatives who are generous enough to share their craft with us. There are so many class topics. You can do illustration. I love the illustration classes. Maybe you wanna dabble in a little bit of graphic design, uh, photography, music, web development, freelancing, the list goes on. All right, let me tell you about just a few of my favorite classes from Skillshare. Uh, you might not know this about me, <laughs> but I, I love plants. I love plants. They're all over. Do you want to look at some of my plants? Do you want your face in it? Yeah, it's like David Attenborough. Philodendron Pink Princess. Fiddle Leaf Fig. Hoya Purple Pride. I think this one is actually rare. Skindapsis Pictus. This is some sort of Rupsalis, I believe. And look, it's got blooms. It probably means it's happy. And this is a chain of hearts that I propagated. And look, in a diptych candle. <laughs> if you also love plants, you should watch Plants at Home, where Christopher Griffin teaches us about lights and root rot and propagation and all there is to know about um, plants at home. And another class that I'm doing right now is called Start Drawing. Three fun freeing exercises to spark your creativity. I've always wanted to draw since I was a kid. And I really love that Carly's exercises are a little bit abstract. 
Um, so I didn't feel pressure to be good at them right away. Another topic that I love discovering on Skillshare is um, everything about Procreate. So this is what a lot of content creators use to add movement and animation and text to their YouTube videos. And I have dabbled a little bit of dabbled in a little bit of Procreate in the past, but I would really love to master it. Uh, and the brilliant thing about Skillshare is whether you are a beginner or a pro or you work in a creative industry or not, there are classes to fit your skill level. So if you are also working from home and maybe feeling a little bit stuck indoors, then click the link in my description box. The first thousand of my subscribers to click that link will get a free trial of the premium membership. So you can go in there and explore, maybe learn a new skill or just get inspired or hone your craft or start a side hustle or just invest in yourself. I am a massive fan of the Skillshare platform and I'm confident you guys will love it too. By the way, for those of you who are already um, part of Skillshare, what are, what are your favorite classes? Tell me in the comment section down below because I'm so, I'm always looking for something, something new to learn on there. All right, back to the makeup. I'm gonna curl my lashes. I curl my lashes every single day. Even if I have no intention of leaving the house, I curl my lashes because it makes me feel cute and I feel cute for me. Really close to the lash line and then I sort of move a few mil up, a few mil up, a few mil up and that way you get a beautiful C curve. If I have an extra minute, I like to spend it on my mascara. So I'll add one coat and then go in with a, um, a clean spoolie to comb out the ends or any areas where it looks a little bit clumpy and then I go in with another coat of mascara. Look, I was, I was a false lash wearer until 2020. <laughs> 2020 false lashes went straight out the window, but I, it really took me a while to like adjust to seeing my face without false lashes. And I do find that spending a little bit of extra time on my, on my mascara helps to give me that same wide-eyed effect. For my brows, they're quite overgrown. <laughs> I'm not sure there's too much that could be done for them, but I do like to sort of fill in a little bit where I have a bald patch with a brow pencil and maybe lengthen my tail a little. Just a few quick strokes. But again, if you're someone who is all about your brows, then you might like to focus on this area of makeup. I just like a little bit of a, a little bit of a swish swish. And then one of my like favorite tricks of the moment is I'll take the Benefit Gimme Brow Tinted Brow Gel in the shade three which is actually a lighter color than my natural brow hairs. And I find that using this all over gives me a, a fluffy, bushy, quite a large brow that's a little bit lighter and softer. It just adds a certain softness to my face using a, a lighter brow gel. I've been really curious to hear actually, how have your makeup preferences changed this year? We, you know, with everything that's happened. Do you find yourself wearing less makeup or maybe more makeup? Or do you find that the types of products that you're gravitating towards has changed? I was uh, listening to someone recently on YouTube who was saying that she tends to wear less lip products now because of, you know, the, the reality of wearing a mask every day. Yeah, I'd be really curious to hear how, how you feel like your makeup preferences have changed. I feel like mostly people have said that they're wearing less makeup. I feel like I'm wearing more. <laughs> For me, makeup has always been a, a place to escape. So I guess it's, it makes sense that I'm wearing suddenly a lot more of it now. <laughs> Lips for me is that part of my makeup where I just sort of have fun with it. So every day I sort of wake up and I look in my drawer and I think, ooh, what lip color am I gonna wear today? That's like my playtime. Um, but one thing that I've noticed that's, that I'm doing a lot recently is a big blurry lip. I see this a lot on like VS models and, and a lot of fashion models, it's this kind of hazy large lip and I'll show you how I achieve it. So I'm gonna go first in with a nude lip liner. This is by M Cosmetics. I did an M Cosmetics order recently, which is why I'm testing out a lot of their products. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line my lips roughly. I am overdrawing, I am overdrawing quite considerably here, but it'll come together, watch. <laughs> So I overdrawn my lips quite a bit there and I'm gonna take my fingers and just tap out the edges. So the idea here is to soften that lip line so that it doesn't look quite so sharp. And then grab your lip color of the day. I have chosen the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer. This formula is lush. 
it is like a, it really is like a lip cushion I think that's the perfect name it gives the, the lips this most glorious shine so I'm gonna pop that on and again lightly blending it out and the idea here is that you get a very uh, youthful kind of lip that it makes for a little bit more of a believable big lip than if my, my lip contours were really carved and really crisp. And that's the final makeup look. I can typically do that in about 10 minutes and it is the highlight of my day. I love putting on my face. I can anticipate that some people are going to think like, if you're working from home, like why do you need makeup? Nobody needs makeup. That's not the point of this video. Uh, I think for many of us, you know, putting on our face, getting dressed nicely, even if we are working from home, restores a sense of normality. This makes me feel good and it makes me feel productive and I enjoy it. And whatever it is that makes you feel good, do that. There is no obligation to wear makeup, but if it makes you feel good, then do that. Now let us together do that very relatable thing that we all do where we last minute run around with our laptop and try to find a decent place in our house to hold a Zoom meeting. Shall we do that? Yes, let's do that. Okay, so this is me in our study, right? It would make most sense for me to have a, a Zoom meeting here. But as we can see, this is the worst frame ever. This does me no favors. I have light coming in from only one side. I've got a distracting background. This is a nay. I'm going to pick up my computer and go somewhere else. <laughs> so I can move around my house a little bit and I can sit on my couch. Now here, I feel like the issue is that I'm backlit, which makes it very hard for, for people to actually see my face. And also the, the computer is set very low, which is giving this very awkward, unflattering double chin angle. This is a no. <laughs> so we've moved here to my dining table. I am sat in front of a very large set of windows and it's important then we're, when we're looking for light that the light is directly on our face as opposed to one-sided. That said, this is indirect light. And if you're a plant lover, <laughs> you'll know what I mean. It's not, uh, the sun's rays are not actually touching my face in a way that's blinding me. That's probably not ideal. This is just a soft indirect light coming, coming from um, the window. Now, one thing could improve this frame a little bit and that's if the the computer were a little bit elevated just so that it was um it looks as i'm looking eye to eye so let me get a shoe box <laughs> pop our computer on a shoe box and already i think that that's a little bit more flattering and just a little bit easier on the eye now let's say that you don't have a ton of natural light in your house um, what you could do is face a lamp directly in front of you as though it were a window. Um, I would avoid really orange or really yellow tungsten kind of lamps. If you can try to get a lamp that has a little bit more of a white light. And then this is actually my favorite space in my house for me to take my Zoom meetings. This is in front of my kitchen. I think as long as your background is tidy and, and not very cluttered, I think it gets the Zoom tip of, tick of approval. Feel free to actually move your computer a little bit further away from you if that's more comfortable. I've got it elevated here on my, on my shoe box. Um, I'm well lit. And yeah, this might seem like a lot of faff, right? Why am I exploring my entire house and investigating the best place to take a Zoom meeting? Really, you only need to do it once. And then you've kind of, you've got the gist of it and it's very easy to, to set up from there on. Uh, yeah, I hope that this little activity was helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Come say hello to me on Instagram at Karima McKimmy. I'd love to chat to you there. Also in the comment section, let me know what you'd like to see from me next. And yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye.